Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week, sponsored by CadTech Seminars. CadTech Seminars does Revit training, implementation, and consulting across the U.S. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to check us out on the web at freerevittraining.com. We also support the SBET program, where you can get free Revit training in the state of Louisiana. So give us a ring or check us out on the web. Again, freerevittraining.com. Now let's get on with the tip. Creating slab edges and depressions in Revit. I'm going to open up Revit Architecture, and you'll see in here I already have a slab set up. Now this is Revit Architecture, but no doubt you can do this in the other two apps just as uh, easy. That'd be Structure and MEP. Uh, what we have here is uh, our slab. Now we're going to go up top, and uh, first thing I'm going to do is make an adjustment. I'm not sure how. Uh, well, let's just check it out. I come down here, and I hit Home, and I drop down the floor, and under it you'll see Slab Edge. Now when I roll out here, it's going to say, okay, pick an edge. So I pick an edge like so. And you'll see how the objects merge together. Now they may or may not merge depending on the material that is chosen for the slab edge. So let's take a look at that. Uh, this is cast in place concrete. So we're going to drop this down. Let me uh, cancel that. I'm going to drop that down again. We're going to go to slab edge. And we're going to take a look at the element properties. Um, and under it, we'll hit type properties. And you'll see that it says material cast in place. Uh, by default, it's usually set to by category or something else. So let's just pick something else. We'll pick default, and we hit OK, and we hit OK, and you'll notice how the materials are separated. So if you are getting this scenario where you're getting a break between the two materials, go up top and change the materials. Even if you try to use a tool like, let's say, join. That's what this is, join geometry. And I pick A and B. You see they won't, they won't match up. They have to be similar materials. So let's just quickly fix that and we'll move on. So I'm going to go back to Home, Floor Slab Edge, Type Properties, and I'm going to say Material, Cast in Place Concrete. Hit OK on that. Hit OK. And you'll see how they merge in together. So uh, that's a nice way of getting uh, it to set up. Now we could create, let's say, a brick ledge here by grabbing this object and we'll move it out. So hit Move, and I, let's say pick a point, and I just kind of drag the direction I want to go. Again, you'll see the work plane is a little screwy, but I'll just drag it out, and you can see we may or may not get exactly what we want. You're thinking, ah, maybe that's not it. Or we want to move it down a little bit. So you can play with this, and you might get a slab edge. Yeah, there you go. But notice a lot of steps involved. Now, if you try to do it around the building, the, it even gets more complex. It, it becomes totally frustrating. So let me show you an easy way to create a slab edge. In Revit, what we can do is, if we select uh, that tool again, Floor Slab Edge. Now, we go to Modify, oh, excuse me, let's go to Floor Slab Edge. And we're going to go up here again, uh, Type Properties. You'll see that it actually uses a profile. And that's, that's important to know, because you can create any profile you'd like, and we can then apply it to the edge of the slab. So this is actually going to make creating slab edges uh, let's say grade beams, etc., real easy to uh, do in Revit. So I hit OK on that. Here, next thing we'll do is we're going to go up top and we're going to go to families. Now, if you never created a new family before, don't panic. It's actually quite simple in this scenario. We hit new family and we're going to create a hosted or open up a hosted profile. So that is profile hosted. And we're going to draw the shape that we want to follow around the slab edge, so we open this up. Now by using a profile hosted, you'll notice that it has some notes. This is the face of the slab. Here's the top edge of the slab. So if we remember that, we're good to go. Now as far as the math, I'm just going to draw this fast, and you can edit the math how you want. But I'll come in here and I pick a point. I'll drag down maybe an inch and a half right now. Okay, well two, just because it's snapping that way. I'll drag out, let's say, five, and I'll drag down, let's say, two foot. And then we'll go over, let's say, 8, and then maybe 12. And again, it's all this math is up to you. I'm just doing it for a visual here. We'll come back up, come back over, and we come up like so. Now, at this time, this is the top of the slab. Maybe I want to, uh, let's say, uh, a chamfer right here. So I'm going to go up and just kind of chamfer like so. Now, I close it, and there we go. Now, what we have here is this uh, footing with a little brick ledge. Notice the insertion point right here, very important. Now we save it, drop this down, save as a family. All right, we give it a name. I'm going to call it, let's say, uh, CAD Tech Custom Slab Edge. Okay, 
Again, you call it which you, whatever, you, whatever you'd like. I hit OK on that. Now we load into the project. When we load into the project, we're now going to go, let's say, to 3D so we can see what's actually going on here. Here's our slab. One more step involved. We loaded the profile in. Now what we need to do is take this type, it's called slab family, slab edge, and we're going to duplicate it. And when it comes up, it's going to ask for a new name. We're going to call it, let's say, uh, CAD Tech slab edge. And you may, may be a bit more creative with this than I am as far as creative slab edge. And then what we do is we pick the profile. There it is, CAD Tech custom slab edge. Now, we pick this one and I'm not sure exactly, I've got two of them in here, probably from the last video. So we'll fire that up. Now, we hit OK. Make sure the material is correct. Now, let's go back and uh, crank this thing up. We're in the slab edge tool. I roll over the edge. I'm going to pick the top corner. We fire it up. Notice it puts the brick edge in there. And we walk it around. Notice how sweet that is. Very easy to create. and only took us a minute uh, to create and actually uh, implement. So there we go. Now here's where it really gets slick. Let's say you decide uh, at the one design process that that edge needs to come down, I don't know, a foot. Maybe you've got uh, the slabs going up. You want the brick uh, veneer to come down. So what we're going to do is we hit finish out of that and there it is. Now we're going to go back to view, switch windows, we're going to go back to our slab edge. What we do is we just edit this object. This is again where it gets real slick. We just go ahead and pick that object. Get out of that. Pick it and we'll slide it down like so. That's all we have to do. Load it back into the model, override existing version, check it out in 3D, and notice it's all updated that quick. So uh, really makes it nice. Um, and just imagine if that was a larger building. We did it in one, one quick swoop, bam. Now the next little trick we're going to throw in just for fun is how do I take and bring my brick edge down? Now, this is a little tip. Uh, it took a while to figure out, but once it figured out, pretty nice. So we're going to go up here. I've got a couple of sections. I'm going to fire up that section. And notice how we have that footing and, this, and the uh, brick ledge and all that. Now when we pick on it, it's actually referenced in that point right there. And they merge together because of the material types. Pretty sweet. Now, I'm going to go back to my level one. And I may not see the slab edge because a lot of times by default they're turned off. So I'm going to say turn on my slab edge and right click on hide and view category and I can see it and I've turned that off. What I'm going to do is actually put a brick veneer wall in here. So we'll go back to home, wall, and we'll pick brick veneer and I'm going to trace that outer edge. Just go on around like so. Alright, looks good. Let's check it out in section. Now you'll notice that the, the wall is sitting on the edge of the slab and I'm going to crank it up so we can see the detail but my brick veneer I want to bring down right here you're thinking oh man that would be sweet if I could so how do I get that brick veneer down well we're going to take this wall type and I'm going to drill down into the depths uh, of the wall type and we're going to make an adjustment I go in here and I hit let's say type properties we go to edit and we get to this dialog box I'm going to slot it on over and I'm going to hit preview and you can see over here we have the actual section or actually plan view of the wall. Now if I look over here, notice the modify buttons. I'm going to move it over to where we can see it. They're all grayed out. Okay. Now what you need is your secret decoder ring to figure out how to turn these on. And here's the trick. See where it says view floor plan? Switch this to section. Notice that all these come alive. Now I'm going to click in the window. I'm going to roll my mouse in so I get close on the area right here. And notice when I pick on the object, well you'll notice I can't actually pick on the object because I can't modify it. But when I hit modify and now I pick on it, you'll see how we've got all these little edges. You're thinking, hey, what's all that about? What we can do is split the material just into two. Now all of these are going to work as one right now, but I'm going to say, you know what? Take this object, unlock it. Take this object, unlock it. And if I wanted to, I could even take my uh, sheathing and unlock it, but I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to say, take my airspace and take my veneer and unlock it from my standard one right here. That's all I changed. I unlocked them. I hit OK. I hit OK. Now notice I have a slider, an extra slider actually, that I can slide down to the location where I need it to be. Now we're not going to worry too much about the brick edge and this here, but notice how we're able to pull that down. 
Now we could go adjust our brick edge and have that happen. So pretty nice. And here's another nice little feature. We'll go to 3D now. I spin around. And notice how that one is actually brought down. Pretty nice. Again, I may have to play the math game to get it to figure out exactly where we want it. Last thing we'll do is hit Modify, Match Properties. I'm going to say Take This Wall and Match it to this one. See how it brings it down? Brings it down and brings it down. Uh, so there we go. Let's go back to our sections. And you'll see how we've actually uh, have that section set up now. So the brick material comes down and our studs sit right here. So uh, some nice stuff there using uh, brick ledges. Now what we'll do is we're actually going to put a depression in the slab. Now I'm going to come through here and just delete these walls since we don't need them anymore so we can see what's going on. I'll go back to level one and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow a hole in the slab just very simply come over here select the slab itself and hit edit boundary. Now for quick purposes I'm just going to pick here and cut a hole in it and I hit finish floor. Now if I look at it in 3D which we'll do here, hit the little house, you'll see that we have a, a hole in the floor. Now we need a depression. That is a 4 inch or a 6 inch slab. We want to come down maybe 4 inches. So I'm going to do another little trick here. Go back to my level 1 again. I've got it. And now I actually want to see it in 3D. Now a trick is you don't actually have to create the depression. You just draw a line and note it. The only time you'll see the depression is if you're actually, let's say, cutting a section through it. So if you want to do it in true 3D, here's a quick trick. I'll go up top and again I'll fire up a floor slab. I've got a certain type firing up and now I'm going to come over here and you'll see element properties, floor properties and that's going to be again 6 inch slab. Same as before, cancel. Now I fire up rectangle I'm going to say set an offset of let's say uh, 1 foot. Now I pick here and I drag over the object like so and you'll see it actually sets it in there. Now for my element properties I'm going to say set it a height offset of negative, let's say, uh, 3 inches. I hit OK. And I hit Finish Floor. Now let's check it out in a section. Now you'll notice that what I have is I have two materials here. Now, the floor in the background is, is uh, kind of causing a little bit of a problem. So I want to see my sections. Here's another little tip. Notice how the section's hard to read here. Maybe you want to show something. Uh, quick and a nice little presentation. I'm going to go to my Manage. I'll go to Materials. And I'm going to say, just temporarily, take my concrete. Let's make it solid. Let's set the color to uh, some orange. And we hit OK. We hit OK. Now, it should change. If it doesn't change, usually because of this. If this is set to course, there's some overrides that are preset. See, course. So we're going to come down here. Let's set that to, let's say, medium. You'll see that it's orange. Now, uh, that just makes it easy for us to see right now. Last step in our depression, we're going to go over here and hit, let's say, Modify. Pick on this button called Join Geometry. And we pick the main slab and then this slab and they join. All right. We got the same scenario going here. We got these two. And now we actually have that depression shown in our slab. Let's go to 3D and we'll wrap it up. There is a a uh, trick you could do, let's say I wanted to show a depression in here, but I don't want to actually create the depression. What we could do is come in here and put some line work. Again, I'm just going to show this quickly. Uh, so I'm going to go to Model Line so I can see it in 3D also. So I'm put some lines in. Now, I don't feel like creating it in 3D. I just want to show it a representat uh, representation in plan. And I want to show it in section. So again, this is uh, what I call um, embellishing the plan. And we're going to go over here, embellishing the 3, 3D model. And you'll notice here, we have our slab. Now I'm going to pick on the slab, and there's a neat little tool in Revit. And we're going to go to Modify. And over here, if we move around in these different ones, you'll see there's a lot of little tools that kind of squirreled in, at least on my screen. And if I come over here, you'll see I have Line Work, Cut Profile, and a few other ones, Show Hidden Lines. So I'm going to come over here and hit Cut Profile. And this is pretty slick. What we can do is we can select the object like so. I select the floor slab. Now I can come in here and I can draw lines like so. And you'll notice that I'm drawing this purple line. Now also notice the little, the little arrow. Now I'm going to flip the arrow, hit finish the pro cut profile. Let's flip the arrow. Okay, Whoop. let me hit undo on that. Okay, now see the little arrow? 
I'm going to try to zoom in. I may have to actually zoom out to get it to flip. Modify. I'll pick that little arrow and flip it. Now, if I flip it, it's only going to keep that inside chunk. But what I want to do is keep the outside chunk. I hit Finish Cut Profile. And see how it actually cut the profile for us. So, in reality, there is no 3D cut. But if we go to our plan view, you'll see it looks like we have a cut there, or it's noted. And then we go to our actual section, and you'll see that it's noted there. The last thing we may consider doing to embellish this drawing is this thing called line work. We can fire up line work, and you can actually change the lines. I'm going to hit, let's say, medium lines. And I'm going to come around here, and you'll notice that the line weight between these two are not equal. So I can just come in here, and I can embellish. Notice how I'm embellishing my line work. Uh, this is just for this view. You see how we can make it pop now. So if you need something to pop in Revit, come in here and actually adjust the lines. Now, what if I actually want to hide a line? I don't like that line there. It's bothering me. I'll come down here. I'll say, make it uh, invisible. I roll over it. I pick it. And notice it's gone. So uh, by embellishing or using these tools here, um, which is called line work, we can do some pretty slick things to really make this pop. So uh, even if the object changes or things uh, adjust, those lines will stay. So there you go. There's the uh, tip of the week that is embellishing slabs using slab edges, using uh, depressions, and also using where we can cut a profile. Hope that helped. Thank you.